Welcome back to the Sports News Analysis YouTube channel, your home for the NFL on YouTube. My name is Mike. NFL draft rumors running rampant today um, on all sorts of levels. Here, you know, you have a boatload of analysts that cover the draft. I'm just here to analyze some of the rumors for you and let you know my opinion um, on if they have credence or they don't. And, you know, for today's edition, you know, we'd be, I'd be remiss if I didn't start with Michael Sam. Obviously, a lot of talk about him in the last 24 hours after an interview with Chris Connolly last night on ESPN's Outside the Lines. Michael Sam did announce uh, to the world um, that he is gay. And first of all, on a side note, I think he's very courageous to pick now to make this announcement. And also, I give his teammates at Missouri a ton of credit. Um, you know, although Michael Sam did not ask them to keep it a secret, uh, they kept that secret in the locker room all season, showing how tight knit that team was, and I think really shows the respect that his teammates had for Michael Sam. And I think that translates into an NFL locker room. Um, again, I think that situation with his teammates says a lot. I know you've heard everyone's opinion under the sun on this as far as how he'll be received in an NFL locker room. I'll stick to on the field for a second. This guy is a hybrid defensive end outside linebacker prospect that produced at the, at the in the best conference at the highest level in college football, was an All-American, okay? Um, while I think he lacks some of the speed and bendability to get around the edge and be a dominant pass rusher, I see no reason why he should slide past round five at the worst. I think he's a, a firmly, you know, in the 90s overall as far as a prospect. And um, look, I think if he comes in and works hard and can play, he'll be treated just like every other player in the locker room. I really believe that. Um, I think the dissenters are the guys who think he won't fit in. I think they'll be the quiet minority in that locker room. And uh, look, again, give him credit for coming out and, you know, really – um, making his mark here, um, you know, both not only in professional sports but in society. And I wish the guy luck. And I'm interested to see, you know, how he adapts to the NFL game and if he's able to get after the passer like he did, obviously, at Missouri, where the guy was prolific. And you move on from Michael Sam to one of his SEC counterparts in Johnny Manziel. And Manziel announced today, all right, that he will not throw it as pro day, but he'll have a separate special workout on March 27th where he will throw. And, you know, quarterbacks have done this before. This is not him being unique in any way. He's not announced if he's going to throw at the Combine yet, which is really what I'm curious um, to see, if he will go out there and throw with receivers that he's not really used to throwing with. But, look, everything Manziel does is going to be closely scrutinized from here on out. So just thought I'd mention that here tonight. And, you know, something I thought was interesting is I read about two or three articles today on the outside linebackers in this year's class. And I read two articles that have Anthony Barr as the number one outside linebacker prospect in this draft. Um, if you know, if you listen to this channel, I really like Khalil Mack. I think he's going to be, um, you know, a top 10 pick, no doubt. I think he's the most well-rounded all around line outside linebacker um, in this class. Um, maybe I can't get that Ohio, get Ohio state performance out of my head. And I think too highly of Khalil Mack. Um, but you look at a guy like Anthony Barr, to me, he's very big risk, re risk reward. I could see him being a guy who has trouble adapting in the NFL, but I could also see him being a guy that's a double digit sack guy if he gets with the right defense. And even some publications and articles I read today have Ryan Shazier from Ohio state ranked above Khalil Mack as well. Again, I have them ranked. Mac, Barr, and Shazier. It's that way in my mock draft. It's that way on my big board as well. Um, but certainly, you can't deny the natural ability that both Barr and Shazier have. I just put Mac a little bit ahead of them because he has the all-around game, being able to go in coverage, rush the pass, or play against the run, and he also has a tremendous motor, um, which I think definitely translate, translates um, to the NFL level. You know, from the outside linebacker spot to the running back spot, and Carlos Hyde, and you had Kyle Shanahan come out and say the kind of running back he's looking for. All right, Kyle Shanahan, of course, the new offensive coordinator of the Browns, come out and say he's looking for more of a um, high yards per carry guy that's always pushing the pile and always going downhill, looking for that kind of running back rather than the guy that's always looking to hit the home run. And I think that's the trend we're seeing the NFL go, sort of in the Marshawn Lynch, Frank Gore mold. Uh, rather than the Chris Johnson mold, you know, thinking that you'll probably be in a two-back system anyway. So let's run hard while you're in there, get going downhill, get those high average per carry yards up, wear down the defense, 
and let's see if we can win some games that way. And I can't help but think of Carlos Hyde when I think of Kyle Shanahan describing the type of running back he wants. If I'm the Browns and that's what I want, I'm taking Hyde in the first round with that second pick. Uh, you know, the, the Colts pick that they gave Trent Richardson, up. The, you know, the Colts trades for Trent Richardson, the Browns get their pick. If that's the kind of back they want, I'm looking at Carlos Hyde. I'm not taking any of these free agent running backs, whether it's a Ben Tate paying him all that money or an Andre Brown who has injury history or a Rashad Jennings who may fit that mold but is a little older, you know, uh, just about 30 years old. I'll take Carlos Hyde. Give me Manziel at four. Hyde with their pick in the 20s. And let me roll from there and see what I can get done here. Um, I think that would be the best way for the Browns to go if, indeed, they do want one of those burly, you know, downhill running backs sort of in the Marshawn Lynch mode. But a guy like Hyde, who's a big guy, can run in between the tackles, but can definitely bounce it outside, something he did very well um, his last year at Ohio State. And just to, to conclude it here, guys, just a little thing regarding Eric Ebron. Uh, Eric Ebron, it's been rumored he's put on weight to be able to improve as a blocker. And, you know, leave it to the people who cover the NFL draft that before they found out this information about Ebron that he's been trying to put on weight since the season ended, you know, leave it to people who cover the draft to have that be the one knock on him. If you read any scouting report on Ebron, they'll talk about how the guy isn't that good of a blocker. The guy puts on weight to become a better blocker. And now everyone's saying, well, you know, how much weight did he put on? Is it going to hurt his speed and his ability in the in the receiving game? You know, sometimes you can't win with these evaluators, and uh, I'm one of them, okay? But in Ebron's case, he's look, he didn't look any slower to me uh, this season at North Carolina. How much weight could he have put on since the season ended? Is it going to negate his ability to separate from defenders? I don't think so. I think this is just something to talk about. Um, because sometimes we run out of things to talk about, quite frankly. But um, I, I still have Eric Ebron firmly as my number one tight end, and I don't really see that changing, um, barring, God forbid, some sort of injury leading up to draft day. Guys, let me know what you think of some of these rumors here. Hit me up in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter as well. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Do a host of NFL draft videos, NFL free agency videos. So be sure to check them out. Thanks for listening. Have a great night.